Okay, so this is just a really short little video just to um, link in the work we did on productivity with um, modern day farming practices and how they can basically get the most out of um, both both the crops and the animals that they're rearing to um, reduce energy losses and therefore make the most amount of money. Okay, you may have seen images like this before. This, but These ones will be from America. Large scale fields, absolutely gigantic. Um, keeping... Um, animals confined in pens again that, that happens all over the world um but the sort of mega farms you see in america these are called sow pens um again not too great banned in this country actually but you know very common across europe um again confined animals we'll talk a bit more about um what the effect of that is on productivity Okay, so we'll talk first of all about the um, effect on productivity when raising animals. Okay, so again, you will have known a lot of this already. So they restrict their movement. That means there's going to be less energy available for muscle contraction. So again, less respiratory losses. They're kept indoors, so it's nice and warm in there. Again, reducing heat loss. And um, they control what they eat. They give them the, the best type of food to ensure maximum growth, no waste. And, of course, they by having them inside, they exclude predators. All of this, of course, is to reduce respiratory losses. The, um, the less respiration that is happening, the more of the energy that's being taken into their body is being used to make them grow. Their biomass goes up, and therefore that's more profit for the farmer. In fairness to farmers, I suppose I should say, obviously supermarkets driving down the prices. I think farmers would probably argue they don't make much profit anymore, but that's the principle. Okay, so it is actually these, these top two in particular. Obviously, if you're not doing as much muscle contraction, then you're not going to be doing as much respiration, so less of your biomass is converted. Equally, if you're kept inside, then it's going to be nice and warm in there, and again, less requirement for respiration to keep warm, and so again, more of the biomass um, that's been made by the animal eating will will stay inside the animal and make it bigger and therefore more profit. As for controlling food, um, clearly when we're talking about less, loss, less losses or less waste, um, most of the food will be di efficiently digested by the animal and therefore there'll be less lost in the faeces. Okay, and I'll just go on now to explain or remind you how that fits in to our net productivity. Okay, so linking this back then to our work on productivity, tried to keep the colours the same as on the previous bit. So, of course, I, if you remember, was to do with the amount ingested, okay, and by controlling that, it means there's um, the maximum amount, most efficient, efficient digestion to get the most amount of biomass. Equally, less lost in the faeces, Again, because it's well digested. That's keeping this number big and this number small. And then the respiratory losses and keeping them contained means they can't do the muscle contraction. So again, that makes that those losses smaller and keeping them warm. Again, we'll reduce the respiratory losses, so again, that number will be small. So hopefully you can see there that the net productivity is going to be better better for the farmer if you can make um, I as big as you can and F and R as small as you can, which is exactly what happens. Now, we will be watching a video in lesson. Um, you know, it does have some upsetting scenes in, actually, but it's quite, quite eye-opening to watch that and see you know, the impact of, of this intensive farming and how you know the welfare of the animals and a lot of you I'm sure me included you know eat meat don't I thought I was aware of where these things came from but actually there were potentially practices going on in this country which you might not feel too comfortable about and um, obviously lots of things are banned here we are pretty good with animal welfare in the UK but you have to consider about importing products from Europe where perhaps those will, those laws aren't in place but anyway we'll talk a bit more about that in lesson Okay, so farmers can also um, manage their, their crops. Agriculture can also be um, influenced by farmers in order to get maximum productivity. Okay, a couple of different ways in which we can do that. Okay, first of all, we can, well, the whole point of all of this really is to basically minimise 
competition and the way in which they do that is they they want to make the food webs as simple as possible so the two things which could be competing um with for the crops with the crops are of course other plants so weeds and the way in which farmers um get around that of course is to use herbicides which of course um kill the plant or sorry kill the weeds and enable and therefore the NPP and obviously so on through the food chain. Now you will have already talked about back in year 12, um, the balance when you did biodiversity in communities, um, that balance that farmers have in you know conserving the environment and farming, trying to make money. And as I said before, you know, the, the supermarkets are driving down the cost, so farmers are trying to make a living. But equally, you know, doing this stuff will reduce biodiversity and the knock-on effects of those which you discussed in year 12. Okay, the other issue, of course, is, is the, what we'd call deem as to be pests. So animals that are feeding on the crops, okay? So again, what farmers can do is they can use a pesticide spray um, to kill the animals, insects or whatever it is. And these animals are reducing the NP for a couple of different reasons. I mean, it could be direct damage to the leaves. So if they're eating the leaves, then the plant is going to have a reduction in its GPP and therefore NPP, less photosynthesis because it's obviously got less leaf. So that will reduce GPP in the leaf. Okay, the animals could also um, be directly competing with us. So they'll be eating the crop, it's the, eating the fruits or whatever. So if they're directly competing with us, that's an extra trophic level in the chain, and again, we'll be reducing the GP passed on. But again, same problem as for the herbicides and that it reduces biodiversity. That's something that um, farmers have to consider. Obviously, the law makes them do that. And obviously, there's um, a lot of call nowadays for organic farming, which we'll look at in a little bit more detail in the lesson. Um, and we watched a little video about intensive versus organic farming. Well, actually... It is possible for organic farmers to still to still do this. Obviously, they still want to keep um, the food web, web as simple as possible, um, but they can do that, for example, instead of using um, pesticides, they can use natural pest control. So naturally occurring, like for example, predators of insects. Good thing is it doesn't need to be reapplied um, it's a bit slow to act, but you don't get the issues with things like resistance. Um, it has specific targets as opposed to just sort of generally killing all sorts of things. As I said, it doesn't need reapplying. So there are, there are things that farmers can do to still um, get the principle of removing these extra links from the food web and therefore increasing the productivity without doing perhaps what we would have seen in the past as a sort of more aggressive, intensive farming techniques. Okay, so in addition to those things, the, you know, the herbicide and the, and the pesticide, there are other things that farmers can do again to kind of get the maximum out of the food chain and therefore the most productivity. So they could, we'll go on later on to talk about fertilisers when we do the nitrogen cycle, but of course they can add fertilisers to kind of get, making sure the plants are... Um, getting the most amount of biomass they possibly can, so removing any limiting factors that could result from not having enough minerals. Um, they may do selective breeding. Again, that would be the same for for animals as well. They could use selective breeding or genetic modification, and in fact they do, to ensure that the crops that they the crops or the animals that they are using are um, as productive as is possible. You know, they have the most amount of muscle if it's an animal or the biggest fruit or the sweetest fruit or whatever it is that they're trying to get. Um, back to crops then, they could ensure all the limiting factors are handled, so the use of things like greenhouses or big polytunnels, gas heaters to keep the temperatures at the right level and carbon dioxide levels, etc. Lights so they can um, farm all night and so on and so forth. So forth. Um, they can also do something called crop rotation. Again, we'll talk a bit more about this when we talk about the nitrogen cycle. Um, so that basically ensures you get as much nutrient into the soil as possible. 
Um, and again, they could protect um, crops, not just by using um, pesticides to directly kill the animals, but just protect them from being eaten. You know, classic things like using some netting over the top, um, or I suppose, you know, things like scarecrow or bird scarers. Um, they could also protect them from frost by using polytunnels. So the and lastly, um, they could... Again, we'll talk about more about this when we do the nitrogen cycle, but they could ensure they plough or aerate the soils to ensure that you don't, they don't strip out the nitrates. Again, we'll, we'll discuss that when we do the nitrogen cycle, but again, that ensures that there are plenty of nutrients in the soil to get maximum GPP in the plants. Because without aeration, the anaerobic bacteria that would then thrive in the soil basically convert the nitrates that the plant needs back into, um, back into atmospheric nitrogen. Of course, the big difference with um, with farming crops is that we're about net primary production. Okay, so like with animals, we were primarily looking at um, respiratory losses. Um, in when we're looking at trying to get the most out of our crops, we're trying to maximise that maximize the GPP and that's what all of these things will do.